Well, honestly, I mean, working as a barber, the the reason that I got into comedy is because people kept telling me that I missed my call. They kept screaming, man, man yeah, like I would crack jokes all day in the barbershop. It would take me an hour to do a haircut because I'm cracking so many jokes and telling stories about the night before, whatever. And, you know, cats would be like, man, bro, you, you should you should really try stand-up comedy. Like, you missed your call. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I never thought about that, you know. And so one day I found an open mic. I was just Googling, hopped on the Internet and um, saw that there was a local open mic and went and tried my hand at stand-up comedy. And here we are, you know, 13 years later, headlining the punchline out here in Philly and, you know, half hour produced by Kevin Hart, TV show, stand up on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon and just so many others. And it's like, man, who knew? Hey everybody, this is Mike and you're watching the Real Black Podcast. And today we're in for a treat because for the next half hour, we're gonna be talking to T Murph, who's headlining this weekend at Punchline Philadelphia as we speak. That's May 5th and May 6th, 2023. T Murph is in the building, everybody. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right you're already making me laugh man hey the way i popped in i felt like it needed to be an interest like yo <laughs> it just came in all smooth all right well before we get into it beard advice man listen i have been walking around the streets of philly and i have been asked about this beard so many times i've only been here for a day one day man and, and, and brothers stopping me, they automatically assume I'm from here because I got a beard. Like, what, you, what, man, what, you, what, you, what you using? Hot? I'm like, black Jamaican castle oil. That's, that's what I'm using. That's that's it. Okay. And, and you know, that that's that's really all I got. Some people are like, well, how you grow it? I'm like, you, what, what, I get, your grandma got to have a mustache in order for you to get a beard like this. That's really, that's really it, man. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Every, every time it starts to get a little bushy, though, I get scared and I, I trim it down. Nah, man, you got you gotta let it grow. You gotta go through the rough phase. Okay. You well, gotta I just look go all patchy that. for a week. Yeah, it'll fill in. It'll okay. happen. Okay. All right. I'm 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 a, I'm gonna try. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna resort back to you <laughs> when the time comes around. I wanna I wanna get it all full, like not Sunni Muslim Philly. Yeah full but but just yeah like grizzled old dick gregory full <laughs> just just a little just a little just a little nap a little, just a little nap to it yeah i'm not i'm not necessarily looking to convert uh-huh <laughs> i just want you know like a, a professor style maybe like half that yeah, maybe man, so like, if, if it can and you're a barber right so i'd, I'd be like yeah. all right give me half off and a fade. That's that's what I want with my beard. Yeah, man. Yeah. So I, you you just got you have to commit, man. That's it. You gotta commit. If you if you keep shaving it, it'll never come. Commit. That's that's the word of the day. So you were a barber before, right? Before you stepped yes. into comedy. Before you committed to comedy. Well, honestly, I mean, working as a barber, the the reason that I got into comedy is because people kept telling me that I missed my call. They kept screaming, man, man yeah, like I would crack jokes all day in the barbershop. It would take me an hour to do a haircut because I'm cracking so many jokes and telling stories about the night before, whatever. And, you know, cats would be like, man, bro, you, you should you should really try stand-up comedy. Like, you missed your call. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I never thought about that, you know. And so one day I found an open mic. I was just Googling, hopped on the Internet, and... um Saw that there was a local open mic and went and tried my hand at stand up comedy. And here we are, you know, 13 years later, headlining the punchline out here in Philly. And, you know, half hour produced by Kevin Hart, TV show, stand up on late night with Jimmy Fallon, and just so many others. And it's like, man, who knew? Did you have material the first time 13 years ago? I mean, what, what was your material? I told stories about the time I got into a fight with a football player. And um and and, and 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 it didn't really work out too well for me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> okay. you know. But it was one of those. It was one of those, one of those things where it was like I've been telling the story for a long time. People would always be like, "Man, tell them what happened when you got to fight with." 
And I'm like, I didn't get the fight with anybody. I'm like, he punched me, and then I was on the ground like I lost my car keys. Like, I was just looking around <laughs> because he knocked me straight to the ground. Everybody always laughed. And I'm like, it's not funny to me because I didn't even know this man was going to punch me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not a big dude, and you play D1 football. Why would you put your hands on me like that? So, now, see, anyway. that now, looks can be deceiving because you, like, I've when you are watching T Murph on TV, like, you can't tell. Uh huh. But you, you and Kevin Hart are roughly the same size, right? I'm well. I'm 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 taller than Kevin. That's, You're a little that's, bit taller than Kevin. Okay. I'm 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 five four and a quarter. Okay. Kevin is like five two. Okay. <laughs> but the buff too, because we we saw you on uh, woke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which eight pack, you know, <laughs> which happened during the pandemic. You know what I mean? Prior oh. to that, I was fat. Oh, talk about that. Yeah, what happened? I mean, the pandemic changed a, changed a lot for a lot of people. Um, but like some people like me, I just ballooned. I saw I saw no I, I got I said, oh, I, I saw no reason to go to the gym or work out and be around <laughs> a lot of people that could get me sick. No. So my, my thing was one, the gyms were closed. So mm-hmm. all of the gyms were closed. So what I started doing was I bought like all the stuff. I bought like sauna suits. Um, I bought like at home. Uh, workout yoga stuff and whatnot. And I just went outside, man. And I started working out outside, um, you know, in, in this field next to, to my condo that I had. And I wanted to lose weight because it was one of those things where it was like, you know, we got a worldwide pandemic. You're seeing people are like dying, like left and right. And it's like, I was overweight. I'm like, man, this is this is like a pre existing condition. I have asthma. I'm like, I got to do something. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I just got on TV. I can't die now. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so that 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 was it, man. That was yeah. the goal to to get healthy. And I started like the keto diet and all this other stuff. And I dropped weight. Dude, I dropped like 30 pounds so fast. One month I dropped almost 20 pounds because keto, wow. you, you drop fast on keto. Keto, is that intermittent fasting? Like explain that for people. Just so, so intermittent fasting, I was also doing that. So I would stop eating at 8 p.m. and wouldn't eat again until 12 noon the next day. Um, and with keto, it's a high fat diet, high fat, low carb. So you're taking in no more than like 20 carbs a day, but you're eating, you know, healthy, the rest of your meals consist of healthy fats and, um, you know, veggies and things of that sort. So you just really eating a ton of meat and which people don't realize if you eat healthy fats, it'll help your body, body burn fat. And as long as you're not taking in carbs, your body turns into a fat burning machine. So you drop weight fast, but the weight that you're dropping is fat. And it's, you know, but you're also not going to, you're not going to build a lot of muscle either because you're not eating carbs. Okay. So, so you have to do, how do you build muscle then? If you- so once you drop the weight, I switched over to a carb cycle. So I started to work carbs back into my diet, but it was based off of what I was working out during that particular day. So if I'm like, I'm working out chest or whatever, I would have more carbs that day than I would have if I'm just doing arms. You get what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just about figuring out, um, you know, what your caloric intake is. And there's so many apps out there to help with that stuff now, man, breaking it down for you so that you don't have to. Okay. For those who are just tuning in, we're talking with comedian T Murph, who is headlining this weekend as we speak, weekend of May 5th, 6th at the Punchline Philly. Mm-hmm. So, back to comedy. Um, so you 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 were you were barber. You're cracking jokes. I mean, mm-hmm. were there any inspirations besides yourself? And um, I mean, yeah, dude. I, I I literally used to sit in the barbershop and play stand up. So it's like you know, this is pre like the 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 Bluetooth speaker or whatever. We had like a boom box in there with the tape player. Plug your phone in what or whatever, and just play old sets on YouTube from Comic View or, or, or uh, Big Black Comedy Jam. And um, I'm just trying to think of all the all, all bad boys of comedy. Uh, we would listen First to Bernie time. Mac set. Um, you know, D-Ray had a classic set on, on Big Black Comedy Jam where he would talk about he was selling drugs out the front. His mama was his mama was uh, 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 buying drugs out the back. You know what I mean? Like he was it was just it was it was it was crazy to see that. You know, all of these dudes, again, people that came from Chicago, uh, Corey Holcomb, who was who was one of my favorites, 
um, Lil Rail. Um, I'm just trying to thank Sean Morgan, who um, some of you may not be familiar with, but is one of the funniest dudes on the planet, man. Another Chicago guy. Uh, to Ray, who's here from Phil, who's here in Philly. Um, it's just like I, I, I idolize like a lot of these dudes and to now call them like my friends and peers and, and, and stuff like that. It's crazy. Uh, you know, it, it's so many amazing comments outside of the, the big names that we all know, the Chappelle's, the Kevin Hart's, uh, Bill Burr's. It's a lot of great stand up comedians that people need to get familiar with. Oh, definitely. Well, to Yeah, you mentioned to He's one of the best. Oh man, listen! Like a he, he dog on that room. stage. He owns. Yeah, room. I mean, like, yeah. what's what's your tactic when you when you're coming to a, a new room or a new um? Suit? Really, I, I'll sit out um, for the first show. I'll sit out and I kind of watch the other comedians that go up before me and see kind of what the room is 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 uh, reacting to. Um, you know, kind of what what their what their lines are. You know, every every room is different. It's like. I can talk about this, but if I talk about this, oh, they'll get a little tight on me, you know. But um, Philly is one of those cities where I, I, it reminds me of Chicago, you know, hard city, blue collar city. And when people come out, they come out to laugh. You get what I'm saying? So they're they're, they're not they're not gonna sit there through your through your BS and all your political whatever. You're like you got to come with the funny. Mm -hmm. And if, if you don't come with the funny, you're gonna get stared at. You know what I mean? So. Like last night, last night was a great show, great show. And, and, and for me, the biggest compliment a comedian can get is the staff telling you, yo, I haven't laughed that long. I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. Like this, this is the staff. They see more comedians than anybody because they're here five to six days out of the week. And it's just an influx of comics coming in and they've seen all the material. So for them to be like, yo, now you funny. It's like, oh, man, thank you, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, you, you gotta, you gotta come with your own brand of funny, your own angles on certain things, because everybody's talking about the same stuff. Yeah. For the most part, but yeah. Um, and I know you have a family, right? You talk, yes, you talk a lot about your family and in, in your, in your sets. So with, 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 with my family, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to realize, especially you know, post pandemic, that there's so much material there. Because you got an opportunity to spend time with them, and you 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 started to to learn about them and know them in ways that you didn't before. So you know, I, I've spent the last three four years with with my sons, who at the time were thirteen, now seventeen, about to get licenses. It's like these are completely different people. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's 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 like a time jump, and mm -hmm. you have all of this material that you've built out over this time to be able to talk about. And um, and it's 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 interesting to see to see you know who who they become or who they're trying to become. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't have any kids. I mean, I can remember when I was seventeen, but I I'm uh -huh. so glad that I'm not seventeen today. Oh yeah, it's different. It's different. Social media, social media has changed the game. Yeah. Oh, well, speak, well, speak on that. I mean, that's that's important because you do have a, a big social media presence. Mm -hmm. um, and where, where should people at you, by the way, while we're talking? Oh, it's just at T Murph, T M U R P H. So, okay, let's we'll get that pretty out, easy. Get that out of the yeah. way. Yeah, but I mean, did were you active on social media during the pandemic? I mean, did you see your numbers go up or I, I was active, but not it, it was one of those things where it it kind of got depressing at times because it was just like, you know, we had, um, you know, the George Floyd uh, murder that, that took place. And then um, you got all these people who were just losing their lives. And every day you cut the news on, it was just somber as shit. I'm just like, I can't, uh, I can't yeah. keep dealing with this. So I kind of I took a break for a while. Uh, and if I did get on social media, um, for the most part, I would try to, you know, bring some sort of humor something something a little different than what everybody else is doing because it's like all right man i'm i'm getting beat down by the news i don't want to get online and, and, and get beat down on, on, on this too so yeah it, it, it was it was trying to find a middle ground i think that was that was a difficult part for a lot of people trying to find a middle ground so do uh, you like when you put your post together now i mean what is it just a routine do you have a team or do you scour it yourself 
and uh, it's, find suffer. It's me, man. It's me. It's my wife sending me stuff all day long because she wants me to watch and see everything that she sees. And some of the stuff I'm like, yo, like, no, nah, this is funny. Send me this. And, you know, what I'll do is I'll just figure out my angle and, and how I want to to talk about whatever it is that I think is funny. Same thing with stand up. It's just like, okay, what's my take on this? Okay. And, so you get to be you know, funny more often. Yeah. I get a I chance. Think Kevin to Hart was chance. one of the first people to open up the world to that. Mm -hmm. The idea yeah. that you don't have to stay in a lane. You can you can find so many different ways to express yourself on, on these platforms. Exactly, exactly. I mean him, um, you know, Lil Duval is another one who has just mastered the social media realm. Uh, and people love this guy. They love him. He'll he'll, he'll forever sell tickets, you mm. know, because it's like when you when you look at his social media page, you feel like you know him. Mm. And that that is that's the goal. You want people to feel like they know you. You want people to get comfortable with you. You want people to want to come out and see you. Uh, Desi Banks, who's a, who's a newer guy to the stand up world, but social media, he's killing the game. You know, because people again, people feel like they know him when they come to the show. It's like, oh, that's a, that's my cousin. That that's right. that's my cousin Desi. So that's how people look at it. And that's how you should want them to look at it. Right. Well, T Murph, I mean, how long did it take for you to develop your to to be a headliner? Like, how did you? I mean, you mentioned some of your peers in, in Chicago, mm -hmm. but like, what what's the road? I mean, like, you know, there are a lot of people that are watching that that sincerely want to be where you are right now. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, for I think it's useful to share your path with people. Mm -hmm. For me, it was just, um, I started to get on the road early. So instead of, it's, it's like, it's good to be funny in your city because you definitely want to make sure that you, you have a presence there and that you're able to make people laugh there. But the, the, the true test is being able to go to Philadelphia, uh, New York, Baltimore, um, D.C., uh, Kansas, Kentucky, hitting these different markets and making sure that the material is universal because it's good to make people laugh at home. But, you know, people may not laugh at the Eagles joke that you have from home when you're doing it in Kentucky. You know, people from New York can't go to Chicago and talk about the A train because, nah, we don't we don't got an A train. We got a blue line, a red line, a green line. Like, you know what I mean? So it's just like you got to make sure that those jokes translate. So, mm -hmm. The, the, the way that I realized that I was actually a headliner was, you know, going to different cities, different colleges, different comedy clubs, and, and, and seeing the material actually work in different rooms in front of different people. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? Having the audience that wants to see you headline and you got to mm -hmm. catch up and get those that hour together, 45 minutes together? Mm -hmm. Or is it the other way around where you've worked long enough where you say, I, I need to move up? I can't, I can't open, I can't middle anymore. Well, there, there's honestly no, there's no set path. Okay. You get what I'm saying? So, and, 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 and you know, again, social media has changed that where, you know, you can have a video that takes off today and, you know, you've built up enough content on your, on your social media uh, platform over time that people start to go back and now all of your videos are starting to take off simultaneously and you build up a following of two three four hundred thousand followers now you can do one-nighters in major cities and sell tickets and you may not be a traditional stand-up comedian but if you're not in a position where you're making you know seven to ten thousand dollars in a day why would you not go out on the road and just figure it out mm -hmm. i'll figure it out you know and that's that's what a lot of people are doing or you've got people who've come up who've done 20 plus years of stand-up comedy and then they start to get videos that get traction and start to take off you know like somebody like two right who's been on the road killing the game and now people are starting to find his stand-up and so when clubs reach out and want to book him oh he can go in and he's got two hours worth of material ready to be able to deliver mm -hmm. so i mean like i say there's no set path when it comes to this it's just whatever whatever happens for you or however you make it that's how you make it in 2023. I hear you. Best night, worst night. Uh, best night, man. I honestly don't know. I mean, it's it's it's, it's getting to the point now where every night is a good night. You know what I mean? Um, just to be above ground and be and, and, and working is always a good night for me. Okay. Um, worst night for, for for sure had to be 
2010, uh, a couple months after I started doing stand-up comedy, I performed at a, at a step show. Um, and it was like 1,200, 1200 uh, people in there. Sold out. Um, and I went in there, and I was new, man. And I, had a, I had a notepad sitting on a stool trying to read in front of 1,200 black, black, black teenage kids and, and young adults. Okay. Man, they slow clapped me off the stage. They hit me with the... And then they start stepping while it... Uh, so they slow, they slow clapped me, but somebody said something from, uh, from the balcony. Like, tried to roast me from the balcony. Okay. And so what happened was I started roasting him because I didn't know stand-up like that, but I know how to roast. Okay. And I went in on this man. And I, he was in some skinny jeans. He had some 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 little dreadlocks. Oh, I destroyed him, and the audience <laughs> lost their mind. And I was like, I said, I told him. I remember, I said, I was like, I know you don't have a gun because if you did, I'd be able to see it. And the audience lost it. They <laughs> lost it. And he was like, he said something like, "Don't make me come down." There. I was like, with them jeans on, you won't make it down here to next Saturday. And the people <laughs> were just dying. And so I'm killing to the point where I was just like, oh, let me go back to the jokes. So I went back to my notepad. Back to the notebook. They started clapping me off again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was by far the worst night I've ever had in stand up comedy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Relationship advice is something we also cover. I mean, do you have any words of, of wisdom for those in the dating scene? You know what? In all honesty, um, I would tell people find somebody that understands you it's always about you know find somebody that makes you happy and that's cool that's cool and all you can find somebody that makes you happy but you need to have somebody that understands you um and i mean understands whether or not you're an emotional person understands what you need understands um you know when you need to be left alone some people just don't understand or don't give people the the space that they need in order to to grow sometimes and in relationships, you need to realize that people may or may not need to be up under you 24 7, 365. Um, what the hell was that? My bad. I heard a random beep. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I'll let you. But, uh, but yeah, no, when it comes to relationships, it's just you have to, you have to be able to, to give grace to each, uh, each person, if that makes sense. Um, you know, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm learning that, you know, uh, with, with my wife. Um, you know, there'll be times where I'll see her and she's kind of like wound up and I just got to kind of let her process and get through her thing. Sometimes she sees me and I'm, I, my thing about being able to decompress is just going downstairs and playing my game. And, you know, at one point she didn't understand it. She would try to talk to me while I'm like playing the game. I'd go like, why are you, what are you doing? What are you doing right now? Like, this is, this is my, this is my me time. And I'm like, I'm in, I'm in a heated game, a 2K. I, I'm, I'm up by two points. Or I could be up by eight points. And then I look up. She's talking. Now my boy is back in. He, he, he's come back. It's a one-point game. And I'm like, yo, like, can you please go away? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm coasting right now. You know, but she 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 starts, she realizes that now. So when she sees me on the game, she'll watch me. Like, I'm just going to go. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm back to my game. When I finish, hey, but what did you need? What do you need? You know? Boundaries. Yes. Yes. Respect boundaries. those. Yes. No, that 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 rings a bell of truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, so I'm I'm glad you worked out. I I I would elbow. <laughs> I, I catch a flagrant. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it's a heated time, and it, she doesn't understand. It's just a game, but it's not though. Because if I lose this game. He's going to talk so much trash for the next few weeks, and I don't want to hear it. So I need, especially if you're down the entire game. If they were down the entire game and they come back, oh, there's yeah. no way you're not going to hear about this. All right. Well, I know since you play game, you, you play 2K? Yes. Is that, is that the game? So when, when did you first start that one? And um, <laughs> who's your player? Dur during the pandemic. Really? Dur during the pandemic. I was not a video gamer. Uh, prior to the pandemic, um, I actually started buying PS5s and reselling them. So I, I bought, I bought and sold maybe like twenty plus Playstations during the pandemic. Yeah, good credit, Xbox. or you just knew where to get the hookup. 
No, no, no. So I I, I follow like uh, I'm, I'm a shoot. I'm a sneakerhead. So okay. I follow a lot of a lot of um, a lot of people on Twitter that'll post direct links to get you know PlayStations or whatever. But they would it was it was shoes before. So it was off whites, Jordans, Travis Scotts, and this that. But then pandemic hit. The pandemic hit, and it was just like okay, I already I pre ordered a PlayStation, and so I pre ordered an Xbox too, and it came. And I was just like, people want them, but nobody can get them. So every time they dropped, I would just buy multiples. I would buy multiples, and I would sell them on StockX. I would sell them. I have a friend that has a resale shop in Chicago, downtown on Michigan Avenue. I would take them down there and sell them. And I'm talking about, we would sell these things for $900 to $1,100 each time. So I was winning. <laughs> so uh, I opened one. and was just like, oh, you forgot how to pay on. this. Yeah. And I'm, I'm starting money. What's the big deal? Why is this worth? Why is this yeah. crap? So many people. So I, I play. I started playing old games um, that you can stream or whatever. And man, I started getting hooked. Like back back in the day, like when I was a kid. Then I downloaded 2K. And we started playing that. So my friends were like, "Man, you should play me." And we started playing. And next thing you know, I, I, I'm, I'm in it now. And this was, I think, it was maybe 2K20 when I get when I started playing. I'm two K twenty three right now, <laughs> and I'm deep in. You got, you got. Well, at least you're disciplined. You're on, you're on the, uh, the intermittent fasting and all this stuff. Because I, I'll be playing with a box of donuts next to me and all. That kind of <laughs> as long as you play on ball defense, you can eat all donut donuts you want. But if you let the computer stick defense, put them donuts up and get on deep. All right. <laughs> I hear you. No, I, I appreciate all the. What do we get? We got some health advice. We got some relationship advice. We got some good laughs out of Team Murph. And once again, where can people find you and what shows you have coming up? Because there are a lot of people watching who are not going to be in Philly this weekend. Okay, definitely. Um, so you can find me on anything at T Murph, just at T Murph, um, T M U R P H. And if you want to see me, you can't make it out to Philly this weekend. I will be in Chicago. All right. Chicago is the next time. Uh, it's going to be a big show. It's for Mother's Day weekend. It's at the Promontory in Hyde Park, which is an amazing performance venue uh, if you've never been. And uh, you can get tickets on Eventbrite. You can go to the link in, in my bio on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, which has my link tree and has all of the, the shows that I have coming up listed. Love it. So, and also the, um, where can we get the uh, African castor oil? I need Black Jamaican castor oil, man. Dude, just hop on Amazon, type in Black Jamaican castor oil. I Black utilize Sunny Isle, so if they ever want to go ahead and hit me with a sponsorship, I'm down. Okay. All right? Sunny Isle, Black Jamaican Castle. Oh, see how good that sound coming out of my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, T Murph. And no uh, check, check this man out. He's one of the funniest, Chicago's finest, T Murph. Thank you.